Hello, everyone. As y'all stop making your way in, I love it. Let's see. Rochelle La Lame. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Going fantastic, Hello, Carlos. Everybody. How are you? You all look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mindset Monday with Moon. Well, close that down. Now, Rochelle, uh, Rochelle is going to be coming on a second. Our um, favorite, one of our two favorite Canadian uh, women, who I am so excited to have on. Um, I'm just trying to make sure she knows where she is. Mindset Monday on now with Rochelle. The lab. Okay. Back. All right. Let's go live. Let's see if that works. Did she get the link? Yes. All right, let's make sure. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so you guys made it. Admit all. Fabulous. Make sure. Yes, yes, Queen. Yes. That's how you do it. We don't have time to handwrite a thousand different letters. I'm busy. I barely have time to actually write my name in the snow. All right. I live in Florida, we don't have snow here, so let's be here. But that's what you gotta do. And you just play with your settings on your printer and you'll have all of that done for you. Much, much easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful, was that helpful, my dear? All those little nuggets you have here. And look who just got in here. Hello, Rochelle, how are you, baby girl? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, although it's going to totally throw me because it says you're Alyssa right now, which is hysterical. I know. I can't even with Zoom, something happened, whatever. Anyway, I'm Rochelle, but I always say if you get one, you get the other. So kind of whatever. That's okay. I'll do Rochelle. Uh, kick ass. La Lame. There we go. Rename. Oh, yay. Thank you. Thank you. See, power to the people, honey. That's right. So I don't know if anybody else, I don't think everybody was here with the first time you were on, my dear. So I'm so excited to actually like pass you around like a joint at a frat party and everyone get to share the love. All right. Fabulous, right? <laughs> hey man, I'm down. There you go, right? Uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, she is what a millionaires looks like, just so you know, through real estate. Let's be real. Let's be real. All right, fine. Let's be real. Multimillionaires looks like. Oh okay. my God. <laughs> Eventually, that grind and hustle will pay off so that that will be a reality. Right now, I still live between Crack Alley and Hooker's Rolls, so let's not get it twisted. Oh my God. I love Crack Alley. They've got the best chicken fingers I've ever had, my <laughs> Yeah, apparently. Don't yeah. forget the donuts. The, oh my God. Have you had? <laughs> <laughs> I've had the beignets. They have them out, like in the spring, the beignets, they can dip them inside the actual like raspberry sauce. I think it actually might be made with some like congealed placenta. It's delicious. Oh it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we talk on Investor Party. Uh, so this is why we're part of the tribe. So <laughs> Rochelle started investing in 2015, correct? 13. 13, oh my. So actually what I'm gonna do is I want Rochelle to tell us how she got started and who she is. And we're gonna have a gay old time together. Rochelle, who are you and why are you here? Okay, well, I don't wanna take up too much time, but I'm co-founder of Epic Alliance Inc. So Alyssa Thompson and I both started the company in August of 2013, so we're seven years old now. We just celebrated our birthday for the company last week. That was fun. Yeah, and basically we took basically 10 months worth of rich dad real estate investing education before we actually did any real estate deals. But if you go back into like, we have YouTube videos and I just kept really bored telling the story, but there's lots of places where you can find out the full story. But we met in prison while we were giving back because we were apprentice electricians who went in to talk to women at the Pine Grove Penitentiary about working non-traditional roles. So we were just visiting, okay? <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, Alyssa ended up, um, one thing just has kind of led to another and whatnot. We ended up, um, I needed to, I bought a house and I wanted to build a basement suite, but when you work 80 hours a week, it turns out you don't have any time to, you know, spare time to build a basement suite. So I actually took a month off of, of work after school and I 
told Alyssa this in conversation and she's like, I'm going to come help you build this basement suite. And I was like, that's not going to work well. I don't work well with others. Like I, we're friends. It's not going to go well. Anyway, one thing led to another in one month, we actually built this suite. I'd never worked well with anybody in my life before this. And I always say, it's like, she knows how to handle me because I'm kind of a little bit of, of a firecracker. And so it does a really good balance. A and little? yeah. A yeah. Firecracker? yeah. Really? You know, sure. uh, yeah. <laughs> So at the end of the day, we found out about Rich Dad Real Estate Investing Courses. We went to one of the free or cheaper three days. And then at the end, they tell you, you know, it's only however many thousands of dollars. And the courses that we wanted were $40,000. Well, I just put all the money I had into building my basement suite. I had no money left, right? And so Alyssa turns to me when we're at this three-day course and she's like, do you think we could do this? And I was like, yeah, I just don't have, you know, $20,000, which would be my half of the courses, right? She's like, I didn't ask you that. I asked, do you think we can do this? And I said, yeah, no doubt. And she's like, good. She was going through a divorce and she was going to be getting $40,000 from her divorce settlement money. And she was like, I'm going to pay for our courses. We'd known each other for like eight months at that point in time. And I was like, what? Like who does that? Right. And she did. And so that investment has obviously paid off because now fast forward, you know, we've, again, we've started our company with, you know, one year or in year one, pardon me, we flipped one house, year two, we flipped two houses. We've doubled our portfolio ever since then. Currently we control $90 million worth of real estate and we're on our way to controlling a billion dollars worth of residential real estate in the next four years. So one second, yeah. that makes me so happy. I have to hold myself. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I love that you just mentioned that was so great is you said we started with one house in the first year and you had experience in like construction and like blah, blah, blah and, and actual like kick-ass bitch women hardcore work, yeah? And like one flip in one year and the next we did two and that's where everybody's like, I'm doing it wrong. Like I'm going slow. But now fast forward seven years, it's now 90 million in holdings. That's yeah. amazing. And the biggest thing, yeah, the biggest thing to remember is that we started with nothing. I had sunk everything I had into building my basement suite. Alyssa sunk all she had into our real estate investing courses. She invested in us. Now, don't get me wrong. Like we doubled down and we took all the courses. We took every single nugget we could. We leveraged every single opportunity for networking, every single opportunity for going out and finding deals, every single lead, like pounding the pavement, doing all the things. We did all those things. So that's why, Jacob, I love what you're doing here because you're really cracking the code for people and you're literally taking years off of that evolution right i mean if we would have known you back then we probably could have you know already been at our billion who knows right but everything happens the way it's supposed to i'm a true believer in that and at the end of the day i you know we had to start with other people's money because we had none of our own so why did we get really great with creative real estate investing because we had no other choice, right? I just had a client call or potential client call with the lady this morning. And she's like, honestly, full disclosure, she's like, I'm an active investor. I have 10 properties. I'm completely capped out. And she's like, I'm just really curious about how you built what you've built when you started with nothing. And so, you know, I said, well, I'm not going to give you the whole enchilada, but I can give you some nuggets so you can go do your own research and figure out what makes sense for you to continue on if you wanted to get investors, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, Anytime you can put some options out and people take those options and you can put it into a contract, you can make magic happen, right? It's just throwing it out there. And, you know, I, I guess like we're talking about mindset and stuff, whatever, but your words are going to be your reality, right? And so if you say, well, I can't offer that because they're just going to say no. And then are you surprised when somebody says no, right? Like I always say, the worst that's going to happen is you're going to hear no, but if you're like, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? Put it out there. And at the end of the day, if they say yes, it's like that much even crazier because you're like, I never thought they were going to say yes. What the fuck? Right. So put it out there, like, just make it happen. You know? So it's actually, I, that's so brilliant. I said, by the way, if you met me in 2013, I wouldn't have known anything yet. Um, I was cute though. I was in fantastic shape. I, great, I looked a lot more like Bo at that point in time with like legs for days. It was great. And my high heel collection <laughs> through the roof, just letting you know. <laughs> but um, I still have them actually in the garage. What am I going to do with those? Not the point. But you know, all come, it all comes together. But the whole idea is that we create a community full of people who have like minds, who are ambitious, who are hungry, and also giving. So that, therefore, everyone's supporting each other, which is how we're making things grow so quickly. I mean, we've grown so quickly already. 
since the last time you were here, honey. I, I can't even, I don't even know where we are. But um, it was funny because I called her last week. I thought it was actually her birthday. And it's because I didn't actually read the post. Um, that's my bad. Sorry, girl. But celebrating Epic Alliance's ninth birthday, seventh birthday. What is it? Seventh. Seventh. Seven. Mm -hmm. And you have the goal to like retire in like a year 10, right? Or what is it? Yeah. So two years. So I am retiring on my 40th birthday. So when we started the company, I was 30 and I said, I will work every single day for the next 10 years to build an empire. So I never have to work another day past my forties if I don't want to. Right. And it's interesting because sometimes people are like, well, that's stupid. Like you go, 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 go all the time. There's no way you're just going to be able to retire. But again, everybody's thoughts are different about retirement. I'm not going to just curl up and die on a recliner. Like I'm literally want to travel the world and live my best life doing what I want when I want. You know, if I go to Thailand and I end up, you know, finding this exotic beach and I'm like, wow, I love it here. I'm just going to chill for a year. I want the opportunity to do that. Right. Right now I can't even go away for a week without things falling apart because the systems are not there yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a plan in place to basically take off all my hats in the next six years to pass on the torch to people who want a job and you know to other people who want to be part of what we're building and it's interesting too because again watch your words right but at the end of the day there's some people that are like you'll never be able to do that i'm like hmm, your belief system not mine thanks though bye right bye. like i don't have time for that energy in my space right so i'm looking at i know i'm going to attract the right people into my world at the right time for the right reasons you know, that, I couldn't say that better. Plus, you know, you know exactly what you're doing. And it all comes with a plan, which is, like, which is fantastic. Do you consider yourself to be hyper-organized? Are you like one of those people? Okay, so just to put this into clarification, okay, like let's look at my desk, guys. Okay, this is sad, <laughs> but like, I don't know if you can see that fucking mess. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that looks like my desk. Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so not, 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 not hyper organized. I do literally live and die by my lists though. And I literally have to do lists for days. I am not techie at all. Hence why I couldn't change my name on the zoom call. Right. But I go through a lot of pens. Okay. And I'm just a pen and paper kind of person. And when people are like, yeah, but you know, in this day and age, you got to be able to do a PowerPoint. I'm like, no, I have people for that. Right. Oh, you got to be able to do this and do that. I'm like, nope, I can hire people for that too. So the way I look at it is hone in on what your skill set is and hire out the rest because I don't need to be great at all the things. Like, let's be real. I, I agree. That's actually something we're doing here people come to the table with what they're good at yeah. and we use what other people are good at, which is what's making the biggest difference. I don't want to be good at everything. I'm pretty much good at everything else except for everything. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, as long as you're good at all the things and then, you know, none of the things and then part of the things, I mean, it, it'll work out. Right. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely agree. So when you were here last time, you had just gotten to um, 80 million and that was only like, what, a month ago, two months ago, not even? It was, I think it was maybe two and a half months ago. Yeah. And now you're at another 10 million in assets under management. Yeah, right now we're buying about a house a day. So <laughs> it's pretty much like a million a week-ish. Okay, that's, uh -huh. how do you guys feel about that? Do you want to be buying a house a day about a million a week-ish? Ish. Anyone? Ish, yeah. Anyone? Yeah, I'll take the ish. Yeah. The ish is free. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So we all agree. We're all in agreement right now that Rochelle is our spirit animal, right? <laughs> and we're gonna like, we're gonna channel in, we're gonna follow and see what's going on. So what we're doing right now with our little like experimental group here, besides, you know, what you did in college with your best friend or your roommate, different type of experiment. We're talking about like what we're trying to do with our investor party and our real estate survivor. <laughs> Autumn's gonna die over there. I'm seeing her face like, oh my God, he said it. Yes, I did. Um, what, how do you go about making the offers on your properties? Is that your side or is that Alyssa's side? How do you look at it? What do you do? Yeah, so traditionally when we first started the company, I was actually the one that had more spare time and I could actually answer my phone at work because I worked for a private company. And I had already told my boss, I pulled him aside and said, hey, I'm starting my own company, 
right? A real estate investing company. So I said, I can still keep working with you for you, but I'm going to keep my phone on. And when my phone rings, I'm going to answer it. And you know, if it ends up eating into my breaks or past my lunch hour, I can stay after hours to make up my full eight hour day, but I'll make sure that you're still getting your full eight hours. I'll make sure I keep working like a bomb ass person. Like I do. And uh, I said, or the other, op the other option for you is if you don't like that, I can just quit now, your choice. And he goes, no, you answer your phone. You're good, you're good. Like I, by all means, I was one of his hardest workers, right? Cause again, for me, like I don't stop. I didn't stop for breaks, I didn't stop for lunches. I just, you know, I'd be drilling and then have a sandwich in one hand, right? Like I just, just do the things. Like I just didn't like stopping because I was go, go, go all the time. And so if I stopped, then my body was like, oh, we're sleeping now, right? And so when you work 80 hours a week, like you just don't have time for that, right? So I used to, when I was, when I was working as an apprentice electrician on the side, I was actually delivering pizzas full time on the back end as well. And so I was literally working 40 hours as an apprentice electrician and 40 hours a week delivering pizza. And so, you know, some people are like, oh, well, that's a lot. I'm like, yeah, it's a lot, but I'm a workhorse and that's just my norm. I did, I'm, I'm weird. I never really been a super social person. I socialize with people I work with and get the best of both worlds. If I can get paid to hang out with my friends, I'm good. You know? So anyway, I've always just worked 80 hours a week. That was just my normal. I hate school. I used to work on the side and that was my reward. Working was my reward for going to school. Again, not really wired, right? Can't explain it. Just is. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it made more sense for me to channel my energy into my own business because then I could be getting paid at a higher rate of return on my time. And that for me is why running a business definitely was a good segue. But yeah, so I did that with that business, um, working for him for about a year. And then at the end of the day, I was like, literally have to be there for 12 hours a day. Cause I was on the phone for four hours between all the business stuff. that was happening. So I was like, this is stupid. I'm just going to segue out. So anyway, um, from there, I used to go look at all the properties. So I would, you know, we did, we buy houses signs. We did Kijiji ads. We did whatever word of mouth. We buy houses, this, this, this. So whenever we got a lead, I was the one who would take down all the information. So of course, what's the address? How many beds and baths? What are you thinking you want for it? Do you know if it needs repairs? Da, 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 da. And then from there, I'd go back and kind of build a little bit of a database. Like, and again, mine was all paper-based. You guys probably have nice texts, like spreadsheets and all that stuff. But for me, I kind of knew good gauges of what a property would be worth in a specific neighborhood. And we grew up in Saskatoon, so we're pretty seasoned with the Saskatoon markets and what we were looking for and such. But um, anyway, fast forward to now, Alyssa does all the buying now because I deal with all the investor side of things and the expansion into the States. And so I'm setting up all of the communication with all the boots on the ground people in our places we're gonna be launching in, in the US. And so that's kind of more my side. And then Alyssa does all of the basically employee management in Canada and then also the acquisitions. So right now that's, that's how it goes, but it's kind of this, it's still the same theories though. We want to find out what kind of deals they are, find out what the numbers are, find out what we can spend on the project. So I want you guys to make sure you heard this. The woman who lives behind Crack Alley and Hooker Row is going international now, just so you know. It took her seven years and they're actually going from Canada to the US and they're going to take over our market. And I'm so okay with that. How about you guys? <laughs> Right? The biggest, yeah, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that, you know, because sometimes people are like, oh, but there's not gonna be enough houses for me or whatever. And I'm like, dude, that's such a scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. Settle down, right? right? Like there's so like we live in such an abundant universe. Mm -hmm. There is opportunity everywhere. Even if we found all the money in the world, we still wouldn't possibly have enough time to do all the deals. And, and also not every deal is a deal for you. Yeah. That's something that's also interesting because people are thinking, oh, this isn't a deal. And I always want to card them, well, it's not a deal for you, but to someone else it could be because there are, um, so some of the creative things that like, like Rochelle does in her business, like she says, she manages the investors side. So they have a, um, I believe I'm, it's called the hassle-free landlord program. Is that correct? Yeah, HFLP, yeah, hassle-free So landlord. pretty much, <laughs> this is the other cool part. They have all these assets under management and Rochelle, how many banks have you ever used? Zero. Oh my God, what was that, Becky? Did you listen? Wait, Rochelle, how many banks have you used? Zero. And how much of your own money have you used? Zero. Oh my, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 no, wait. 
Stop it. I thought you need money to do real estate investing. Is that your belief yeah. system? Because that I believe that would be your results if that was your belief system. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm going to go to church in a second. I'm sorry. I love having her on here. It's just, <laughs> I could go in that. Like, yes, 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 yes. And something yes. else I love is that her business, by the way, yes, right, Pam, right on. It is a female-run business. Rochelle's actually a, is, a, is a minoritized population, which, by the way, is a white jackass here in America. I've learned a ton through what's been going on down here. Have you guys been following in Canada? Like what's been going on the, the, on the yeah. reality TV show that is the United States right now? Have you seen this? Yeah, but you know what's crazy though? So you guys, like, I, again, I'm all behind Black Lives Matter and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm not behind is the political agenda behind all that shit that's actually making all that stuff happen. I'm like, get educated people. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. But okay. what's interesting though, is in the States, how your guys' history has been with Black people and, you know, settlers or, or Europeans or whatever, traditionally, that's the exact same relationship that has happened here in Canada with are like aboriginal people are like i don't everybody's like whether you call them like native american or native canadian or whatever uh, but i i am treaty status right so that is my heritage now at the end of the day i understand there's a lot of ancestral wounds and all this kind of stuff in the back end but at the end of the day i'm like you know what i just am who i am you be who you are and i don't look at skin color i don't look at you know, stereotypes or whatever. I'm like, I'm just looking for good people. You know what I mean? Like I want to surround myself with people with integrity. I don't care what color you are. You can be purple, blue, you know, black, whatever. I don't care. How are you as a human being? That's all I look at. That's what I judge on. Right. So, everyone is green. If you can bring money, you're all green. I love green. Green looks wonderful. Yeah. Green, green, everyone. I, I just wish that our world would just kind of wake up and be like, guys, like, let's just like, let's just get it together. Like it's, it's sad. It's also interesting because I feel like the the one percent, as we're called, uh, as as investors typically fall into, it's really five percent if you think of it this way. But one percent of the world holds uh, was it ninety percent of the wealth. It's a ridiculous statistic, and it's very true. But most of it's because um, they are awakened to the fact that you don't have to be a victim. You take accountability for what you're doing. You have control over what you perceive as wealth. For some people, wealth is money. For some people, it's legacy or somewhere in, in between. It's all different for every single person that's involved there. But wealth is whatever you create it and you want it to be. And it's all in your mind. It's all in your mindset and how that works. So what do you do, Rochelle? At what, is there something you do every day? Like, wh what's your routine? Do you have a daily routine? Yeah, I wake up. <laughs> no, I'm, honestly, I'm not really big into like daily routines. I'm a night owl, so I do my best thinking in the evening i'm not a morning person so i know some people are like 5 a.m club and i was like that will never be me okay so like i could probably stay up till 5 a.m but waking up at 5 a.m let's well, be real that's not gonna happen okay so i believe and again like feel free to you know fight me on this whatever but i truly believe we all have a like natural rhythm and an internal clock and my happy wake up time is 9 a.m so if i didn't have to wake up to an alarm I would just naturally wake up every morning at 9 a.m. It doesn't matter if I went to sleep at 9 p.m. the night before or if I went to sleep at 5 in the morning. I would just wake up at 9 a.m. So that's just kind of what I try to cater my calendar to. If I can try and not set up meetings till 10 so that I can naturally wake up, that's awesome. But obviously, we run a multi-million dollar business. That doesn't always happen. So for me, I set up my alarm. I you know try to book in whatever calls I have. I kind of go according to the day. But for me, I'm always just really into positive mindset and really just feeding my subconscious subconscious with just really good words. So in my house, you'll see words everywhere, like even in my office, okay? So here I've got, um, I don't know if you see that, it says positive vibes only. I've got live every day with intention, uh, you are enough. You know, things like that where, you know, even though somebody's like, oh, well, it was just a pretty picture. I'm like, it's so much more than that because even though you might not be sub like actually reading it all the time, your subconscious is absorbing that shit. Right. And then at the end of the day, I have mantras. So my one favorite one that I, I, if I need a boost of energy or a boost of anything, I always go back to it. I'm like, I'm a money magnet. I'm a deal magnet. I'm an investor magnet. I'm a money magnet. I'm a deal magnet. I'm an investor magnet. Because for me, that kind of fits in what I'm always looking for. Right. And it's interesting because some days I'll be like, oh man, I still need deals for money for the deal on 
Friday. And I'm like, okay, I'm an investor magnet, you know, and it's kind of like it turns on, it raises the vibration, man. Like all of a sudden I'll get a call that day being like, Hey, my funds hit the trust company. I'm ready to go. I'm like, yeah, of course you are. Right. And so, you know, it's just, it's interesting. It's just, it's a raising your vibration. So whatever it is that you need to do, you just need to figure that out. I'm not into journaling. I'm just, I don't like writing. Um, I've been really distant even off of Facebook and Instagram lately, as far as posting, I used to post once a day. Now you might get once a week out of, out of me. And I think for me, it's just an energy thing. And I'm really disappointed with all the negativity that's on there. And so I've really just kind of distanced myself from that. So you just gotta, I think, figure out what works for you. And that's actually, there's something I was saying this to someone earlier today. There's a lot to be said about knowing thyself, like knowing yourself and your business is going to be a reflection of what you perceive you are and what you're able to produce. And no matter what we do, we are only able to produce so much, right? Mm -hmm. We only have so many calories we can expend, so many hours in the day. But when you have this much and someone else has this much, now you're, now you're doing more and more and more. So you're able to grow so much faster and it's been so exciting to see that but you're right there's so much negativity on facebook which is why we took our platform elsewhere so mm -hmm. it's all like positive no no drama queens allowed no negative nancy's or nicks or dicks or whatever they're not allowed on our platform so on the go and we've just been having the best time doing it so so glad you're part of our little family here yeah um, no it's totally my people i can just feel the energy i love it you're gonna love it wait till i let them talk you know, because they love participating and engaging when I let them unmute themselves. Oh, that's exciting. I'm ready. What are we yeah, doing? It's so true. So, um, oh, you'll be so, so it's funny. I have not, I've actually been, held, I've been holding back uh, since um, <laughs> COVID's happened. I've been doing my nonprofit. I haven't solicited donations or anything for it yet, anything like that. But we actually, because I'm like, okay, the deals will sustain the nonprofit. That's my mindset, right? That's what I, that's what I really truly believe. So we actually had a deal come through our desk last week, which requires about half a million that we that we need to do for these hundred mobile homes. Okay, cool, no problem. That's like everything from acquisition and remodel. So cool. So I'm like, well, let's see. <laughs> and I was able to raise those funds Yay. through four people, and yeah. I did it in like what? three days or so it was i was like that was so cool i was like and i wasn't even stressing about it but again i was like okay i know the people i know people who want to do it it would work well for them it makes sense they have that risk tolerance they i know this would be good for them how do i structure it so i thought that was very very um it was very encouraging for me and that's the thing i think everyone here needs to take away like the money is not necessarily hard to find it's you just not it's everywhere that. It's, it's everywhere, literally everywhere. Like people with money, especially now with all the uncertainty in the stock market. Like I know a lot of our clients, they pulled out millions of dollars from the stock market and they were just looking for a, a, like a really good place to put it. And real estate, in my opinion, is the best investment ever because it's not going anywhere. It can't move. Well, unless it's a mobile home, it doesn't move. It's right there. <laughs> the perfect, Except perfect. for that part. Yeah. yeah. We're not getting into that part. So question, Rochelle, do you guys have like, when you do your um, hassle free landlord program, which is a brilliant program, um, they, long story short, uh, Rochelle will turn on her investor magnet and say, Hey, uh, who wants to be a landlord without having ever changed the toilet to deal with termites? And they'll say we do. And she makes them sign for a mortgage. They put 20% down and they get, uh, cash flow, and when they sell the property, uh, Rochelle's uh, Epic is the tenant, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, we're the guaranteed tenant, so You're that our investors tenant. get paid every single month, no matter what's going on with the house. Now, how do you did you have like a servicing company that you guys do, or do you have someone else? That, like, how do you do you have an in house servicing company? We are all in house, so we have 80 team members. I think we're at 80, 81 right now. But again, we do all the things in house. That's everything from our laborer mowing the lawns to our, you know, um, office manager in our office to our laborers. Like we have our own electrical company, so we do all of our own in house electrical, plumbing, carpentry. That's our other give back company is actually apprenticing female trade people in the background, right? So. Again, it's, it's a part of a bigger picture, but we wanted to promote having more females in the trades because they're, they're very underrepresented. And for us, again, it wasn't a great gig for us because we just didn't want to be employees, but there's lots of people who do want to be. And so for us, it's not just exclusive to females, but we were looking to help people who might have not been able to get into the trades. So people, we know our goal is to have 80% either female 
or Aboriginal or single parents. That was really what we were looking for because people who kind of had a barrier barrier to entry to getting into the trades was our goal. So again, we've had some people who've just worked their way into an apprenticeship and they're, you know, single white males type thing. So it's not like we're like, no, you, we're, you know, you're in your privilege. We can't help you. It's not that it's just the right people, but having like a kind of that like minority that we were kind of looking to inspire. <laughs> Damn it, Derek, you're not allowed in. Just <laughs> cry. Cry about it. So, so, um, so I love, so that's actually something that's interesting. It's like when you have that, that, when you have that, that vision of wanting to do something that's big socially, it's amazing at how many people want to get behind it. They, yeah. it it's, it's not even, I don't think that, I think if I had the same vision, but I wasn't doing real estate, I would still have the support that we have just mm -hmm. because people want to get behind the vision. If I were selling like Amway, it would probably have a bigger following because, you know, we want to sell Amway to end youth homelessness. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a little less of a pyramid scheme that way. By the way, I'm not selling Amway. So everyone just be very that's, clear on that. That's good. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, it really comes down to, I think, the mission. And right now, like, there, it's a weird time. It's a really weird time in our, our like just globally, it's just a really weird time. Right. And I think like I was talking to my energy coach about this on my coaching call last week and she summed it up so beautifully. I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this. But she was saying that right now it's like, there's an awakening and what's happening is there's just, it's a divide of consciousness is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's where there's going to be the people who are seeing through the veil of what's happening on the media and what they want us to see to the people who are like, no, you know what? I know this is not legit. I know that, that like we're being puppets right now. And are we feeding into that or are we going to be rising above it? Right. And again, I'm like, that's why I always try to explain to people. I'm like, yeah, not everybody is going to be my people because we just don't have the same belief I, system. I agree. And it's so it's interesting what the power of social media is able to do now. Like there's, um, we've started a book club in our little community and um, we're reading The Boot and the Badass currently because we're actually, it feels like we've been doing it forever, but we're actually putting the exercises into practice as a community. And Vision, who's the author, has been trying to do this whole social media campaign going on to expose uh, the lies of nutrition um, behind sugar, behind the big uh, corporations like Coca-Cola and, and um, Nestle and how they're promoting health when they're really poisoning their bodies and they're sharing it through social media. And I thought that was a really interesting way of seeing how people can wake up their community by just not being silent. You don't have to be pushy. You just have no. to be vocal. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's really weird too, because like even through this whole COVID thing, like I just, I just don't buy into it. Again, I understand like, yes, people are dying, but people die every day from the flu. Like, let's be real. Right. I'm not going to get into this whole rant and whatever, but I'm like, they're shifting the position away from all the human trafficking and all the stuff that's actually actually happening in the background. Right. And I'm like, God, like, this is so crazy. And so that's why I'm like, I've really been distant from social media because people are like, they block this hashtag, they block this. I'm like, then find a different way to communicate. Right. If it's broken, figure the shit out guys. Like, <laughs> So that is what the characteristic behind being an entrepreneur is right there. She just summed it up. Figure the shit out. That's figure all you gotta do. Out. Hashtag figure the shit out. There, that's what's not, that's what's trending right they now. Block that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, oh my God. This is, last time she was on here, she was, she had an unexpected day and had to take the call from her car and it was still snow in the ground over there. I think it's. No, uh, there was no snow. Don't be lying. Or you had a lot of like hats on or I don't remember. But it was, it was a crazy there. day, yeah. It was. So she took it from the car, and I'm like, this is very interesting what's going on. But what I loved was that you also, you swear as much as we do, so it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, so waking up, so you found that investing through real estate was, was your wake up call in so many ways. You started to learn about money and financial matters and how business works, and, but you had a lot behind you before then. Well, yes and no. So I had taken my first ever personal development course after my sister took it. So I, again, she went to this personal um, development course and I, again, you don't know what you don't know. That's my biggest lesson for everybody is educate because you don't know what you don't know. So for me, I grew up, my mom, so my dad passed away when I was 11. So I was a single or like raised by a single mom, whatever. We all have our stuff, right? But all of a sudden I had a 
a younger sister who she was eight. I was 11. So three years younger than me, I became like, we became the ultimate latchkey kids. So I grew up really quick. Right. And so at the end of the day, when people are like, you know, I could have been really bitter about it. I could have just been like rebellious because I'm like, I don't want this responsibility and whatever. And I went the other way. I went into like hyper responsibility. I bought my first house when I was 20. And, you know, I just like, I was never taught about buying houses. Like I didn't even know what it took to get a mortgage. I just was like, well, my mom owns a house. And so if I want to move out, I'll just go buy a house. Isn't that what you do? Like that was just like, me putting two and two together, right? We'd never rented. We'd always lived in a house. So I was like, well, what if I just go buy a house that has a lot of rooms? And then, you know, I work 80 hours a week. I'm never home anyway. So I'll just have roommates live with me and they can pay my bills. Sound like a good idea? Sure. And then I ended up doing that. I bought my first house for $100,000. It was a five bedroom house. I lived in it. And then, you know, we had a huge boom here about five years after that. My house literally within six months was worth 300000 for no good reason, just because our market caught up to, you know, 25 years of not appreciating. And uh, so I ended up selling that house. And then that's when I ended up buying my little house between Crack Alley and Hooker Stroll, because I got used to having the income from my tenants, but I also got used to, well, I got, sorry, I got tired of sharing my kitchen and my bathrooms. So I was like, well, if I could build a suite, I can still have income, but I'd never have to see their faces, right? Perfect. So that was my logic there. And I was like, yeah, I'm never home anyway. So why do I need a full house? Right. So that made sense. So anyway, um, the house I'm going to be moving into shortly here, I just bought a house. I'm going to be renovating. It's actually a single family home. So this is the first time I'll ever actually live by myself in a single family home. So I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm going to be back in the States again. So I'm actually setting up two of the rooms that they could technically be like Airbnb, or if people come into town, they can just stay there. So if you ever want to come visit us in Saskatoon, you have a place to stay. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be close to our, our new office and stuff like that. So anyway, there's just lots of stuff happening and um, yeah, it's just kind of interesting to see an evolution. But at the end of the day, I bought a house just because I, it made sense to me logically. Right. But at the end of the day, if I knew what I knew now, when I was 20, I would have been retired by the time I was 25. And you would have right? saw that 20 year old energy, which is crazy. Exactly. Be very you would have been so bored if you got married. What would you have done? I, I, I don't know. But again, that's not my reality. That's not what happened. I'm just saying though, like I've always just been wired really entrepreneurial and you know, but I only read Rich Dad Poor Dad after this personal development seminar at the age of 28. Right. And again, had I read that at the age of 18, my life would have probably went an entire different direction. But again, I wouldn't have probably met Alyssa. I wouldn't have started Epic Alliance and I wouldn't have been building this legacy that I'm building. Right. And so everything happens for a reason, the way it's supposed to. And that goes with the shit too. Right. So anytime shitty stuff happens, I'm like, what is the lesson here? What's it's, the takeaway? Oh, yeah. By the way, I love that you, I loved your name Epic. How did you guys come up with the name Epic? So Epic Alliance is our company. And it was so funny because I don't know, back in, we were in Vegas actually in 2012 and we were just on a, just, we went as friends. We just drove down and 24 hours drive, you know, went there for a week and then drove back. Um, we were, everybody was we're talking about Epic, right? Everything's Epic. And it was just a word and we used it all the time. We're like, Epic. And then we were talking about starting the business and starting our name. And we were like, whatever it is, it needs to be epic, right? Like everything's epic. It's going to be so big, like bigger than anything and whatever. We had, you know, stars in our eyes and big opportunity. And so we were like, it needs to be epic something, right? So we were like, let's Google the Soros for partnership, epic partners, epic, blah, 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 epic, this epic, that just nothing had a good ring. And then we saw Alliance and we were like, epic Alliance. Cause together we're an epic Alliance. So that was it. You really are. And you guys make epic offers. Yeah, it became so this became so very like versatile. I think that's brilliant. I, I want something like that period. How do I, I want something? Can I take epic? No, I won't. I mean, <laughs> so, no, you know, so it's just for us, you know, I, I've had, <laughs> you're like, I'm back. At but I, I've had, I've had some people though, where they're like, Oh, yeah, your name's kind of like, not really good. And I'm like, did I ask you? No. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, let me check my net worth statement. Let me see if your opinions on it. Yeah. No, not there. Don't see it. No, it's not there. So what is that? So you guys are looking to move to the States, right? And uh, I'm not outing her. She's already said it. So you're just tuning in. She's already admitted that they're moving to the States, um, which is really cool. Now, there are a couple of really interesting um, incentives for Canadians to come to the United States. Can you share what some of those are, Rochelle? That I can't even speak for. I have oh, no really? idea. 
because oh. the thing is, for us, we're not bringing any, well, we are bringing some of our own capital. We have some investors capital in Canada. We've just um, gotten some seed money we're transferring over to the States to be able to have a, a little nest egg to start so that before we're ready for, you know, us investors and whatnot. But I actually don't even know. I don't know that there is any incentives. Um, what I do know is that you guys have this little thing called the 1031 exchange yes. that we do not have in Canada. We have nothing comparable. If anybody ever tells you that, oh, we have, they're lying, right? Like we have nothing like that. And so I'm like, yep, that I'm all um, drooling for the 1031 exchange. So it's just, it's amazing. And so for us, we're, we're going to figure out how that all works and whatnot. But really, I'm like, you can literally pretty much defer paying taxes till you're like dead. Like, yeah, <laughs> sign yeah. me up. Like, yeah what's happening. Right. And like, it's, it's insane. So it's just really to just figure out what works in your guys's market, but really we're just doing the same thing. So our whole formula, and we basically call it the Epic Alliance ecosystem, but we get cash investors who fund our flips, right? So what we're going to be looking for are Americans to join us on our journey to a billion to, they can make double digit returns as a byproduct and we get to build our business. And so it sounds like a win-win to me, right? And so at the end of the day, we'll find properties, our investors will fund them. They can actually utilize cash. If some people have home equity line of credits or lots of equity in their home, they can tap into, or they can actually utilize underperforming invested funds. So if people have big IRAs, they're tired of losing money in the stock market, maybe they got 401ks they got access to because they just got you know let go from their job because of COVID or whatever. We can show them how to turn those into self-directed funds. And now, boom, they can fund our deals making 10% annual rate of return, right? There's so much money out there. It's just a matter of people don't even know this is an option half the time, right? So it's educating, educating, educating. And that's really what we're doing is just showing people, hey, there's a different way to invest. It's just a matter of seeing if it's a good fit for you. And so basically we have those investors, they fund the deal, they fund the purchase and the renovation. We then flip the property, get it appraised and sell it to one of our hassle-free landlord owners. And that investor is going to have different goals. They want to own a cash flowing rental property where they want the monthly cash flow. So with the hassle-free landlord program, our investors all make a 15%, 1-5, annual rate of return on the 20% down payment and their closing costs. So quick numbers, on a $200,000 property on a 15% return with the $43,000 invested in the deal, our investors are making over $500 a month in passive cash flow, right? So we would be earning the principal pay down, that's the the relation there with that specific setup again it's customized if the investor doesn't want the cash flow they can keep the equity blah 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 but just quick synopsis that's what it is so now if you go and talk to somebody who has a property rental property my question is always that's great what are you cash flowing well in canada we've got bc and ontario they're very 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 rich high like priced inventory for properties. It's similar to your guys' California and New York, right? So if somebody was going to go invest and they're like, I'm going to go buy in California and New York, I'm like, really? Probably the worst play ever, but cool. You do you, right? Yeah. yeah. But if I ask them and said, why are you buying there? Most of the time they're going to say, well, it's where I live. I'm like, cool. So again, I ask you, why are you buying there? Right? doesn't cash flow, right? Doesn't make sense. So why? But in their brain, they have to invest in their backyard because they don't know a different way. So now all of a sudden when Epic Alliance launches and we're like, Hey, instead of buying that half a million to a million dollar property that doesn't cash flow and probably won't even appreciate because we're heading into a recession, right? Why don't you turn around and end up buying five to 10 houses with us? And now you're literally making 15% on your money passively. Oh. I don't know. Just an idea, right? Just an idea. So yeah. But again, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And that's so. the same reason why and, and it's also about that barrier. It's your job something too, which I love about like um we we're talking about buried entry and so on and so forth. And so how I work with my investors is we look at a few different ways. Um I got a couple of them here on the call, but we look at what do they need right now in their portfolio? Do they need yeah. cash flow? Do they need 
tax benefits? Are they trying to hedge against something? Are they trying to do a legacy and, and do more portfolio strategies? Like where are they trying to be? So oh. a lot of us uh, who are my age and younger, um, well, I would say 40 and younger in our country, it's still, it's millennial and, zen and zennial ages. The, still the barrier to entry to get into a, a cash flowing investment is ridiculously high. It's so challenging for- Depending for, on your market, yeah. Yeah, well, and keep in mind, I am, I'm talking mostly on um, the, the mid-Atlantic market. So the ones that are on the coastline. So either the West Coast, East Coast, where we are on water. So pretty much anywhere that's on water is, is going to be your appreciative markets, guys. Uh, you have a couple of exceptions like Dallas and Houston. Well, Dallas, Houston's on the water, but Dallas is also considered a mid-Atlantic market, um, uh, a coastal market, sorry, a coastal market. You also have, um, well, Chicago is also on the water. But you, anyway, you get the point. Any place where there's a lot of transportation via waterways, you're going to have yeah. coastal appreciation. But for those of us who are, uh, my first deal, for example, was buying a mobile home on a credit card. And I was like, oh my God, how is it going to work? But I had a credit card that's 0% interest. I didn't know you could buy a mobile home on a credit card. I was like, what? But it's a car. So I could, I, technically I bought the note and the payment every month from the note was greater than the payment I had to pay for the credit card. It's like, oh, this is how that works. How do I do this? So then I started like getting more and more notes and then I started selling the notes and it was a very cool part of the transaction for me. I love that part, but it's not something that all my investors are open to, right? So, and I'm okay with that. It's like, well, what do you need? Okay, and this is what I can provide. If my products don't provide for you, well, I might know someone else that might work for you. And it's, it's cool, man, no big deal. Let's see what you can do. Eventually it all comes back around, right? 100%, yeah. So there's no reason to like, I, there's no scarcity, you know what? And I don't necessarily need to work with everyone. And I also don't need to work with everyone in the same way. Yep. Because that keeps it interesting. But that's one reason why I do like things like mobile homes because, or modular homes, because they are lower barrier to entry, they can cash flow like crazy, and they get things moving. It's also why I like Midwest markets, like you're looking at getting into, because yeah. the price for the homes are realistic, and the cash flow is there. And it does have some small, slow appreciation, but it's, yeah. it's a tangible asset that they can actually go and yeah. utilize. And, and it's predictable. Yes, yes. And right now, because you know, as you said, we are going into recession, you are seeing um, articles saying that now, like. Uh, like confirming it, they all know. I love how they tried to deny it as long as they did, which I found very funny. Like, okay. It's literally, it's like, they're like this, like, um, no, no, no recession. No recession, there's no recession. No, no recession, like, no, like, come on. Like, how are you gonna try and mass this? Like, go print more money. Let's, let's go. One and one equals two, guys. Like, come on. Like, you guys tried to band-aid it for as many years as you could. Slow clap for being really stupid, right? But let's go, like, come on. <laughs> I'm trying to oh, I'm trying to compose myself here Rochelle right. Don't, you, know, you and I are gonna have, okay you know it what time is it fine we're going the soapbox let's do it together why not so it's, it's been hysterical why, how we have 30 million people unemployed and yet the stock market is skyrocketing why is that because they have no more overhead because they have no employees I'm so proud to invest in your stock screw you like Really? And but it's okay. Keep your money in the stock market. Oh my God. It's just, yeah. and also the Federal Reserve is the, is a very clever organization. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's again, it's like the, the writing's on the wall, you know? And again, when people, like, I, again, I've been talking about this. I'm like, we've been literally gearing up for the next recession since we started our company in 2013, right? Cause we missed the 20, 2008 recession. So we came in after, but again, there was the 2000 recession and then there was every recession before that they usually historically came every eight years and people are like well how do you know the recession's coming uh, i don't know we did some research like everything is cyclical guys like there's like oh my god like it's exhausting when you talk to somebody who doesn't actually understand this and they're like you know I, and i know what's going to happen literally like 10 years from now five years from now whatever people are going to be like those epic girls were geniuses. And I'm like, we tried to tell you this. We tried to get you in, but you were just like, no, nothing's wrong, right? And I'm like, God, whatever. And I love how people are like, they're like, oh no, I'm going to be ready for the next downturn. I'm ready for the next downturn. I'm like, hey guys, it's coming. They're like, oh no, no, no. We're going to wait for it to hit the bottom. I was like, really? Yeah. I mean, you've been waiting this long. It's time to get ready. 
Yeah. If you're not ready now, you're already missing the boat. Like, yeah. totally. if you're not with us, you've already missed the boat. Just so and you that's, know. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, like, I was just like, my main goal was to make sure we were up and running in the States by the time the bottom was going to sink. And we're still about a year away, I think, because I think they're still going to try and stretch it. They're going to try and get through the election. They're going to try and, you know, do a lot of things. But at the end of the day, the bottom is going to have to fall. And so I'm so stoked because seriously, I'm like, literally, we did it. We're going to be up and running by September. So I'm like, we made it, right? Because I was like, I want to be there. And it's horrible because I'm not wishing ill upon anybody else. But I'm just like, you know, guys, like I want my mansion in Florida. I want my mansion in, in Vegas, but those are going to happen in three years when the market's here. I don't buy here. I buy here, like really low. Right. And you know, and people are like, oh no, it'll be like a long time. And I'm like, what are you smoking? Like whatever. They will find a way to put a bandaid on that hole in the hall created by the iceberg. Yes, they, they, as we've seen them do. It's amazing how much money we can just print based in nothing. I mean, the dollar bill says it's like based in the full faith and uh, uh, faith and backing of the United States government. I'm like, well, we're quickly losing faith in the government, but we're gonna be on that. Not, yeah. I'm gonna go there, not yeah. going there. Yeah. You and I will, I cannot wait to have you in person and we will just, get a bottle of scotch and go to town. That'd be wonderful. But yes, you're right. So the, pretty much what uh, I had something, you just made me want to say something. I forgot what it was. All right. Yeah. But don't wait for the bottom. That's, anytime you buy at the bottom, you're greedy and you miss out. You never really know what it's going to be. But we yeah. know it's coming. We were expecting between 800,000 and 1.7 million foreclosures between Q4 and Q1. Now, we don't know what that's going to do, how they're going to delay that, but we know it's on the way. Because yeah. people are still struggling, right? So yeah. you have to understand where that part sits for you in your portfolio. But also, you're not coming in to take homes that, or to take advantage of people. You're actually yeah. going to come in and you try to help these people. And that yeah. big alliance, for example, has the capital, the backing, and the reputation to do that, to yeah. help well, these individuals going through a hard time. Again, for us, it really comes down to, like, when, by, by the time you buy a foreclosure, like, they've already lost it. The bank already has it, so it's too late, right? Now, if somebody comes at you and it's a pre-foreclosure and they have equity there and it makes sense to help them, you know, try and keep it and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to set up people for failure. So I'm not going to put somebody into a situation where I know that there's no way in hell that they're going to be able to keep the house because if I put them into a shady situation and then say, okay, but you know, six months from now, if you can't pay your rent, I'm taking your house. Well, then I'm just as shady as the banks. Right. And so it's, oh, it's a case by case, but at the end of the day, if you're buying a foreclosure, there's nobody to help anyway. Right. And so I'm like, it's shitty, but it just is what it is. And, you know, we get people asking us too, like, well, how do you know your tenants are even going to be able to pay rent? And our tenant profile in the States when we launch is going to be basically like low um, class B tenants. So people who are employed, but they're working, you know, at grocery stores or working at Walmart, they're working at places that stayed open during the whole pandemic, right? So they actually became the frontline workers who were still getting employed. They were still working the whole time. I mean, you get me, I get some like, um, like uh, LPNs or whatever, people who work in care homes and stuff like that. But again, they're still working. They're still getting paychecks. And, you know, I, I don't think they're going to not be working because at some point there's got to be people who are able to keep our society moving forward. Like we gotta get groceries and gas, you know what I mean? It's funny because I, um, as much as I, I had this utopian idea of what I was gonna do when I started this nonprofit, I was gonna teach these kids how to be investors and how to invest their money and think, think that way. Um, and it, it was wonderful, it was a great idea. It's so romantic and idealistic and full of shit because it was all my idea, right? So it came from my brain. Fortunately, only I have my brain and they don't have it yet, right? So having to adapt and say, okay, well, these individuals are gonna be benefit. I can make them, I can give them food and shelter and keep them safe during the, a global pandemic and make them feel loved and have a place to heal. And then I can show them by example. So if I can just, now I'm at, hey, if they can open a checking account and save some money, that might be where they are at and I need to, I have to accept that. So they're not going to necessarily be entrepreneurial. Some of them have been. Because not everybody is an entrepreneur. And it's, and that's okay. Yeah. Most people aren't. 
most people aren't yeah and you we can't and i think it's funny because all of all of us we actually see the light and we take the blue pill not bag or the other one and you actually you're like oh i see the world it's like oh not everyone wants to take the blue pill they want to yeah. keep they want to stay where they are and they don't necessarily see on the other side and that's fine. The, the problem with the blue pill is in order for the blue pill to work you actually have to work for it as well and there's a lot of hustle and a lot of like sleepless nights and a lot of other things that go in to making that work right and a lot of times when people say one thing but then the going gets tough and they're like um i'm just gonna go get a job and it's okay because again without employees we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them on our team right it's, it's just true. really really important to understand yourself and know who you are and where you fit into that scope I completely agree. Guys, I want you guys to take a few minutes. Let's interact with Rochelle. What questions or statements or comments do you guys have? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller. Bueller. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the unmute button, bitches, and start talking. You've got a millionaire on your screen. She's here to mentor you, and you're going to sit there. Oh, I have nothing to say, idiots. Come on. Interact. I, I was, I was I, going to. Sorry. Sorry. I was going to say just earlier when you were talking about like the, 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 look, the two types of people, the ones that can see beyond the veil and those who don't in the sense of like looking for looking at a mission and not finding a mission. I find it interesting that in this environment right now, um, we're seeing more and more people looking for missions. Yeah. I think than we were ever before. Yeah. So as much as there are people who are still going to be, I think, masked uh, by the veil, they, um... <laughs> Sorry. That like, you know, girl. <laughs> um, that there's still people going to be like, you know, still, you know, cloaked in this veil. There are still people, and there even the people behind the veil, are, there's little pockets of light in terms of looking for a mission. But on top of it, we're also seeing, and because, things are being over politicized for crap we're seeing more and more like multi-million national international companies also now trying to look like they're doing a good thing and they're trying to say we're going to invest this money into here to, for not for their own self-conscious but because they want to appear like they are you know yeah and, yeah and again and yeah, sorry, I don't want to. And my, my thought is just no, it's okay. It's my thought is just about like separating the bullshit. Yeah. Again, pardon my French. The bullshit from those thought processes and those who literally are doing it for the purposes of furthering a mission. The greater, uh, the greater good, not to just have a you know a photo op opportunity to say we are doing good. This is you know, so you should still keep uplifting, promoting our multinational company that sits on billions of dollars but doesn't do shit for anyone else you know yeah. but you know and thank you for sharing stephanie i love that but and it's funny because when you hone in on your energy and there's dif different frequencies right and if you actually like really follow your gut instinct you can tell who's authentic and who's just doing it for the publicity, right? And at the end of the day, you know what, if that's what they need to do to try and save their PR, I mean, good on you, but it's your choice as a consumer to actually get behind that or to not, right? And, you know, but there's always gonna be shady shit, so. Agreed. The other thing too, to piggyback off of what Stephanie just said though, is, you know, you're, you've got awakenings and, you know, I've had like one of my own, but you've also got these people who will only believe the one side of every story that they see. They won't, you know, try to, and I'm not even saying they have to come to like a common ground, but it's like, they're so polarized that they're only going to believe the ideas that their one side is showing versus seeing what the ideas of the other side are showing when you really and truly understand that both sides are completely fucked and awful. It makes no difference. Like it's all, it's all bullshit. Like all of it, a hundred percent. So it, it's, it's, you know, it's, you're going to constantly have a polarized society, no matter what happens. It's yep. just, it's the way that we lovely Yanks are. <laughs> But what's interesting though with that is I think, and I agree, there's the right side and the left side and whatever, but what I find really interesting and I can see it and I can feel it happening, but there's again, that higher level, those people that are, their vibes are higher and it's kind of like they're, 
they're not really buying into that either way because you don't have to be like, oh, I'm completely right wing or I'm completely left wing. You can actually just ignore it all. Right. No, absolutely. But it's like, you're always going to have people that want to align with something. And when they, I mean, Jacob and I even had this conversation the other day. We're like, screw both parties, screw the left, screw the right, create our own capitalist independent party and say, fuck all you bitches, you know, part of my language. Anyway, uh, question to ask you, how much of, obviously you're not, your money comes from investments. Uh, how do you like supplement using like IRAs in terms of your real estate deals? Like for investors? Yeah. Or just for you and yourself. Like if you were to be a startup person, how would you go about using an IRA to fund your own property investment? Do you have an IRA? I do. Yes. I have two of them. Okay. And then have you leveraged them at all? Like where are they actually currently invested right now? Uh, they're just in like, uh, it's, it's a long story, but anyway, just okay. elaborate for me. Okay. So basically you can turn your self-directed funds or sorry, you can turn your IRA funds into a self-directed account. So what's interesting is we have very similar theories in Canada here. You have to put them into a trust company. The difference is they're very regimented as to what you can invest in in Canada, whereas they're way more open to way more opportunities in the States. So you can actually self-direct your IRAs to start your own company. Like you can use that for your own seed money, mm -hmm. which you can't do in Canada. So again, I'm like, um, what? You can literally take your pension money start a company and fund it with your what? Like it, cause it doesn't happen in Canada. So again, I know the theory, I don't know all the ins and outs of how to tap into it and, and all that kind of stuff, because the only part that I've done research on right now is just tapping into our investors IRAs to be able to fund our deals in real estate. Um, but if you want to, to have a conversation, I know there's lots of companies that do it. We're going to be working with, I can't remember their exact uh, name, but they're in um, Ohio. And so it's, they, they're going to be self-directing our clients, IRAs and getting the money accessible so that they can be funding our deals for us. But. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Like I said, kind of a half answer. I apologize, but I That's know. All good. Awesome. awesome. A quick question. Um, you seem very, uh, what's the word? Very, very self-aware, very like kind of powerhouse. Um, what has it been like to be, and I, and I love it. Cause I think that I totally agree with you that in picking back off what everyone else is saying, like, obviously as a black person, I agree that black lives matter. However, <laughs> however, I'm not with the BS of the, oh, let's just vote Democrat. Let's just like all of the political nonsense behind it has been overwhelming to say the least. But with that, as a minority, as a woman, has it been difficult in any way running a business, being that powerhouse, being kind of like, not just spiritually aware, but aware of, of all of the things? Has it been difficult, like working with people or, you know, connecting with people or just being kind of a powerhouse businesswoman? So fair question. I appreciate that, Autumn. So for me, again, like I grew up in a household where my belief system that was instilled to me was, hey, you know what? It's not good to be normal because what the fuck's normal anyway, right? So like my, that was my belief system and which I'm so blessed for my mom for instilling in that in me. And I, so I've just always embraced my weirdness, my uniqueness. I've always been a bit of a loner, but you know what? I've actually absolutely am so at, like completely grateful for is that in our business, like our corporate culture we're all a bunch of weirdos. Like literally, it's kind of like all the rejects who like didn't really fit in in other places. We are all just like, you know, completely jiving here. You know what I mean? And so I find that so powerful and it's crazy because like we have a temp right now in the office and um, I totally had like a, a, like an actual like visceral effect to her the one day. And I was like, dude, your energy, 
like, you got to leave my office now. Like, this is not good. And I actually said those words. It was really bad. And I like literally didn't mean to hurt people's feelings, but it just like, I was like, your energy is like, not our people. Like, why are you in my office right now? And so I am very, um, guarded of my energy. And if people are not my people, I'm like, we, like, I'm just not even gonna waste my time. Like, so if I have a potential introduction to somebody who, um, somebody sent our way and said, Hey, they might be a good fit for you. I will cut off a conversation in five minutes if I don't like their vibe. And so I'm very guarded as to who I will let into our company, because if I'm, we're going to be going into business together, I'm going to need to talk to this person. I'm going to need to respect this person. You know, it's not just all about money. And sometimes I might have a conversation with somebody and they're like, Oh, Hey, you know, your offerings 10%. I think I should have more. And I was like, yeah, you sound like a douche. So I'm just gonna hang up the phone now and you can go have a good life. Right. So again, I'm just very, I know what my, my boundaries are. And I know what my value is and what my worth is. And I think when you know that, like you're going to get lovers, you're going to get haters. But for me, I'm like, you know what? You can take your hater aid, you shove it where the sun don't shine and I'm going to move on with my life. And you know what? And like, again, powerhouse woman, I always say like, I'm, I'm like, like you said, like you're a beautiful black lady, but it's great. Like, it's great that I'm a woman, but I always say I'm not an amazing female real estate investor. I'm not an amazing, uh, you know, Aboriginal real estate investor. I'm just a bomb ass fucking real estate investor. I go toe to toe with any of the big boys. Let's go. Right. And so, you know, and I'm a very, very alpha female. So I have to be careful because I can pretty much out alpha any male in the room and Bo, I'm coming for you there. Like, look at, I don't have those same guns you have, but for energy, I guarantee you, we can go toe to toe. And I bet you, I could out alpha you. And again, it's not to, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just totally teasing, but I just, <laughs> right? So. To be very fair, Bo might be very muscular and good looking. So <laughs> if I were to call him Alpha. Alpha. Oh, I, know. I mean, he's very good at lifting things. I love <laughs> I just, I just, yeah. Small car, you know, the, the house, just like one-handed. It's very, it's very entertaining. But I mean, he's definitely not the picture of toxic masculinity. No, That's I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, though, if people do come with the toxic masculinity, like you said, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to take them to school. We're probably going to have a really heated conversation they're going to end up hating me and we're going to go our separate ways. Right. And so I always tell people, I'm like, if you ever hear anybody say anything bad about me, you can never, you will never find somebody who says anything bad about my business or my investment opportunities. You might find people who are like that Rochelle's a bitch. Totally fair. Because if they're not my people and I took them to school, yep. I can see why that would be their opinion of me. I mean, let's be very, very clear. You have something very in common with uh, sassy gay men. We do something very similar. And honestly, if you don't have haters, you're not playing big enough because not everyone's supposed to like you, okay? Yeah. People cannot like you and that's all right. Just yeah. keep yourself safe, have a good tribe and move forward. One thing yeah, I love I'm about this tribe is, is this diversity. We have a lot of diversity and that makes me feel so like warm and fuzzy on the inside. Yeah, well, you know you're doing something right. You know, like yeah. I, I had this conversation with one of my friends after the whole Black Lives Matter thing, and she's a very, very light skinned white person, which again, it doesn't matter which, who you are, what you are. But she was talking about how she literally had friends messaging her, asking her how she had friends that were not white. What? Seriously. Can't yeah. even. And I was like, what does that even mean? And she's like, I don't know. It means and one I, thing. It means unfriend. Is that one button right there? It just means unfriend. Bye -bye. But seriously, I was like, we live in such a diverse, multicultural nation. How do you not work with people who are of different minorities? How do you not go out for coffee or supper with these people? How do they not become your friends? Mm -hmm. Like, it just, it, it honestly blew my mind. And she was like, honestly, Rochelle, she's like, I had to just cut off ties. Because like, what do you even do with that? Those people, those kind of people back. never get out the neighborhood block because that's it like that's it i mean you can't because if you're going national you can't not like people it's impossible i didn't like fox people. news too much <laughs> like i i just i honestly i was absolutely flabbergasted i was absolutely flabbergasted and then they were asking her if she was really friends with these people and i was just like oh my god no they're tokens like what the hell like 
Oh my God. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny because it, I, I get, oh, you're my gay bestie all the time. I'm like, am I your only gay friend? Or is there a hierarchy here? Because I'm okay if there's a hierarchy. But if I'm the only one, yeah. you got to go out more often. you got to meet some people. Here, look at my list of former lovers. It goes on for yeah. two pages. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you're like, pick one. Pick two. Yeah. Pick Unless any of them. Here, go back to college. I don't talk to them anymore. You can use them. Recycle. <laughs> Recycle. It's fine. But yeah. So just absolutely gone? mind-blowing. Have you ever gone through your friends list on Facebook and gone like, how the hell did I know you? Oh, well, that's right. We dated. Okay. Has that had anybody else? No one? Just me? Whatever. I've got 2,500 friends. It's not that many. I only dated like 2,000, so it's fine. So um, I digress. So yes. Uh, <laughs> has anybody had any other questions, comments, concerns? Jamie, Derek? Love life, maybe. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's, that's a whole nother bottle of scotch. <laughs> Carlos, Jamie, like Josh, <laughs> I'm friends. Stephanie, I'm right there. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. But then I wouldn't have any followers. <laughs> you also, you also want to let them see that they're they they fucked up their life without you. <laughs> I, I don't follow them back, but they're like I know. Me. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. You like that they follow you to know what you're up to. All I do is I just make sure I post really great pictures that their best friends see it, and then I just walk away. <laughs> shade, shade. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. Fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, um, Jamie, Carlos, do you have anything you want to ask, Derek? What areas are you going to be investing in when you come over here to the states? So, oh, who has that brilliant accent? I can't see you. That would be Derek. Oh my God, <laughs> I love that. I love accents. Okay, love it. Um, we're gonna be, so we've identified four states that we're looking at right now. So we're looking at Ohio, Indiana, Tennessee, and North Carolina. So when I was out in Florida, I actually physically drove to each of these markets. I met with people there, realtors, wholesalers, contractors and stuff. And so it looks like we're going to be opening up in Ohio first. And then from there, we That's will- That's my backyard, quick. <laughs> He's not wrong. Keep going. That's it. No. So we'll, uh, so yeah, so we're looking at, my, my boots on the ground are in Cleveland right now, so- Nice. So um, we are going, we, we're currently trying to, um, I'm trying to coerce, I mean, convince Rochelle and Alyssa to being two of our chiefs for season two of Real Estate Survivor for our residential section, because there is no body, there, there's not, there's, a, there's no better team in residential real estate than these two women. I think they're brilliant. Um, and part of what we try to do is, is uh, encourage minority business owners to take the reins and be strong. So I think it's so cool that we are working together. But can you imagine having someone like Rochelle to reach out to you and say, hey, what do I do here? And then she tells you, shut the fuck up and get it done. Figure it out. Because that's what she'll say most of the time. That's yeah. what I would say. Yeah, if you're going to bring me excuses or the like, I can't, I need three solutions for every problem you bring me. So if you bring me a problem and no solutions, you got to go do your homework. I love her. I'm keeping her. You see that? <laughs> so for, if you're interested in joining Real Estate Survivor Season 2, we're actually going to be putting up registration for that next week. This week, we're starting a Stock Market Survivor, and that's going to be starting on Wednesday. Bo is the coordinator for it. Emily's the one teaching it. It's going to be a ton of fun. I don't know how I'm going to pull it off, but I will. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So just yeah, blah, 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 blah. Again, you can't do it if you're already doing a real estate challenge. You need to focus. But if you are doing the stock market challenge, you will be doing it for two months, learning how just trading stocks. And you'll have to do at least 100 before you're able to go live with your trades. Um, and then, and that's also to be eligible to take the second part of it, which is going to be trading options. So we're going to be doing a lot of, of growth in our community to see how we can cross uh, collateralize each other's knowledge and just keep growing. I mean, why not? Why the hell not? So we're gonna be doing that as well. Um, let's see, uh, if you are going to be going to Colorado to help us open our second Sherlock's Homes Foundation, uh, please come on out. We're gonna be going there the 3rd through the 13th. Come anytime during that time. Uh, let us know if you're arriving as soon as our itinerary so we can actually plan the remodel as best we can. 
Uh, there's a lot to do. It's an eight bedroom house. Uh, so we're looking at doing that. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, there's a big need. I, I'm trying to get to Utah as soon as we can because there's a, there's, that's where the biggest need is for um, youth that have been kicked out for coming out uh, or they just don't fit their parents' criteria. But they're good kids and I'm, I'm trying to get there as close as we can. But that was, this is his first one. So um, it's kind of close, right? It's a big square state with mountains and, and Mormons. It's the Ish. same thing, right? Yeah. It's just they're like, they yeah. kind of, do they yeah. touch? I think they, yeah, touch. they touch. I think they touch. Yeah. So it's, we'll get there. But yeah, we're doing a bunch of house. If you can't make it, but you want to participate, <laughs> please share the word. We are trying to do a, um, we're going to be doing a fundraiser. We're trying to do a fundraiser right now. So we now have to furnish an eight bedroom house so we can actually have kids in there. So instead of uh, getting an Airbnb or hotels, those of us who are going, we're going to take those funds and actually go and order mattresses and bedding. So it's at the house for us while we're there doing the remodel. So if you're interested in getting to know more about that, please reach out. We are here to answer questions. Um, the next thing is uh, Alpine has their education platform that we can also use. It's on Investor Party. So go ahead and take a look at that. The code is in the, uh, is mm -hmm. at Investor Party so you guys can get that for a discount. It's like $99 for Real Estate 101, which is very cool. And I'm trying to think what else there is. Yeah. Was that everything I had to cover? So far. So far, yeah. And then when we, if, so, and you guys are gonna have to convince Rochelle, I, I'm pretty much there. But if she, uh, in two months, they should be able to go here in the States. So, and that's when we're gonna be able to go live. And we wanna help her expand her boots on the ground here in the, in the United States. If you're interested in being a part of her team and learning from her, she's gonna be one of the pairs that we're gonna bring in. I'm so excited. She's brilliant. I really just wanna have a reason to meet her and drink with them. That's really what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna oh, do this. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to help her make a million dollars yeah. to do it, I'll do it, fine. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. If that's the cost of admission, that's totally fine. She's gonna remember me. She's gonna love me, and her liver's gonna turn into a pickle. So it's fine. We got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it'll be great. It'll be awesome. It's gonna be so much. But what fun. does she drink, honey? I don't really drink. Uh, All right, just a fair question. Yeah. She drinks like lychee juice, and maybe if in a pinch, she'll suck the alcohol out of a deodorant stick. You know, <laughs> just the light. Yeah, I'm a lightweight, honestly. She works too much. She works sleeps much, for like yeah. 15 minutes, gets up and gets back to work. And Alyssa's the same way. Oh, how is she doing, by the way? Good, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. going to be calling her next. Give her a heads up. Um, all right, guys, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. It is 420 somewhere. Derek got really excited. Look at that face. Anyway, so you guys are amazing. I'm so glad you're here. Rochelle, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad. You're awesome. Thank uh, you for also having me. Have Wednesday, we have uh, Stephanie. Who's coming on Wednesday again? We Jose. have Mobile Homes Partners, and Jose Garcia will be coming on to talk okay. about the Money Honey Mobile Homes. Money Honey Mobile <laughs> yeah. Homes. So actually, that's the deal that we're working. So for those of you who are interested, the 100 mobile homes we're putting under contract are in Georgia and in South Carolina. That's the capital I raised the other day. This is super cool. Um, so we are going to be doing that from the field. And he's going to show you how to walk through the mobile homes, what to look for, and what's different between these vehicles and um, stick-built homes so you can see what's going on and how we're structuring the deal. So you'll be able to see that. So come on for that. It's going to be really, really cool. Uh, Jose is fantastic. Also, brilliant mind. He's one of those people that the education system failed and has done incredibly well in spite of it due to his self-education. Very inspiring. You'll love that. That's going to be Wednesday. And on Friday, we have someone, for the first time, we're going to have Nicole on. Stephanie, talk about Nicole. <clears throat> uh, Nicole Johnson, she actually is uh, 28 years old, but a sophomore in high school at 15, she created her own nonprofit in high school um, because she did it as a way to try to give back to build awareness because her brother has autism. So it was a way of helping that message forward, and it's now kind of evolved. And it's what, and for short, we're called Move or Movers uh, for those who are involved in the nonprofit. And it's a, a lot of social justice um, opportunities in, in the form of uh, performing arts in some way or another. Um, so that's kind of the cool thing about her is that for 13 years, she's been running a nonprofit. And it was what used to be a project of maybe 10 people has now evolved to uh, 16 states and nine countries. Isn't that awesome? And she started as a sophomore. 
as a sophomore in high school. Yeah, as a like, sophomore in high school. You are you are like fearless, right? You have there's like no fear. You'll go and tackle anything. You'll jump on anything or anyone in my case, and you'll just make it happen, right? But somehow, as we get older, we start like putting these barriers on what we can and cannot do because either we've got this license or that limiting belief or this person in our family, or we're married to that guy. It's amazing, and that's what we're trying to do through this, these conversations: is show you guys if you just let all that shit go what is possible and we are all growing together to make that happen so come and join the journey we're also going to be adding things to these talks not just real estate strategies but things that edify everyone um uh, speakers who are going to come and talk about burnout about uh knowing your own spirituality and, and meditation uh, nutrition and health things that take care of the investor as a whole person not just your investment strategy because if you are in your best light your investing is going to reflect that. So we're going to be doing a series on that as we go, guys. It's, as always, been a pleasure for me to host you guys on Investor Party. Thank you to our life of the party, Ms. Rochelle Deflem. Mwah! You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And thank you very can't much. Can't wait to get on the, uh, oh, my gosh. Okay. Survivor. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you there. Also, okay. go ahead and like their page. It's Epic Alliance Inc. Incorporated. They're um, actually streaming right now, and you can find them on my page. Go ahead and like them, follow them. They have tons of webinars, tons of talk, wealth of knowledge, and swearing as much as you possibly fucking want. All right, love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Michelle. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I love her. That was fun. <laughs>